am Dr. Gautam Das from Kolkata, India. I am using Kuldarev since last four years and uh, I found it very useful. So Kuldarev and Standard RF have some basic difference. So if we are going back how radiofrequency works in pain management, we know that radiofrequency produces a heat lesion and that heat lesion is going to ablate the nerves and for that we need to place the RF probe close to the nerve and when we are using a standard RF so this distance should be somewhere between 2 to 4 millimeter if our needle is placed beyond 4 millimeter even though we are close to the nerve there will be no lesion in contrast when you are using a cool RF the size of the lesion is much bigger and even if the nerve is little away the chances of success is going to increase size of the lesion for cool radio frequency is going to be somewhere between 12 millimeter to 15 millimeter so even if the nerve is little away from our radio frequency cannula even then it is going to catch the nerve and chances of the success is going to increase second important advantage of the cool radio frequency is that it produces a spherical size of the lesion spherical size of the lesion means the angle independent lesion the pain suppose i am giving an example so when we are using conventional radio frequency for denervation of the facet joint then because the shape of the lesion is cylindrical along with the shaft of the needle so what we need to do we need to place the needle like this so if this angle is not maintained then what will happen the nerve passes like this and needle must be horizontal otherwise failure is sure but when we are using the cool radio frequency my needle can be placed in any angle i can place the needle like this i can place the needle like this i can place the needle like this because it is going to produce a large spherical lesion which makes the procedure a sure shot success is certain and that makes the procedure extremely simple particularly i'll be telling for the newcomers who are not you know well versed with the radio frequency techniques they can do it easily with a high success rate because we pain physicians always prefer to put the needle perpendicular that makes the technique easier so this makes the cool radio frequency the most effective so operational failure is not there so not just the you know the size of the listener that is important in my opinion this makes the cool radio frequency different from the conventional radio frequency so the chances of the failure of the conventional radio frequency is very high not just because of the shape of the listen size of the listen it is also because of the you know the angle is important for the conventional radio frequency which is not at all important for the cool radio frequency so the only thing where the cool radio frequency you know we have to be cautious where we don't need a large size lesion say for example if i'm doing it in a gastrocnemian ganglion we don't want a very large size lesion so apart from it almost all indications the cool radio frequency is extremely good because the reason what i just now told because the angle is not important and size of the lesion is larger so initially when cool radio frequency came that time we knew that the most important indication is the sacroiliac joint so in fact when we read the literature when we knew about the re cool radio frequency uh, at the beginning of our career we knew that it is most important for the sacroiliac joint because sacroiliac joint is supplied by lot of lateral branches you know the, the starting from the l4 to s4 and individual picking up the nerve is impossible so where we are doing a you know the carpet bombing type of lesion from the ala of the sacrum up to the lower part of the of the sacroiliac joint and there the cool radio frequency came with the highest level of the evidence but later on more and more studies are coming people are using for the other indications and we came to know that it can be used for a lot of all of the different indications like if i am talking about my practice i'll be telling facet joint is one of the extremely good conditions where the uh, the cool radio frequency is uh, very useful 
and as I told you, it also reduces the total procedural time because normally when you are doing it for the conventional radio frequency, we are doing two three listens together so that the failure is not there. Here only one listen is enough because you are having a large size of the listen. The technique is easy. You can do it in the tunnel vision perpendicular to the nerve. You do it so it can be done very easily, very quickly. This is one important area which can be done with the lumbar. But nowadays even in the cervical areas also the cool radio frequency can be done. Apart from this, of course there are a lot of evidences in favor of the genicular nerve vibrations for the knee joint, the articular branches for the hip joint pain. I have a lot of experience in doing the, uh, the hip joint radio frequency, the articular branch of the hip joint, particularly the femoral and the operator nerve. It gives extremely good results. It is also very useful for the shoulder joints. We have done several cases for the shoulder joint also, which is also giving the extremely good results. So, in my opinion, the cool radio frequency can be used almost in all other conditions except for the you know, gastric ganglion. So, as a whole, if you are looking about the thermal ablation of the nerve, the, it produces the second degree and the third degree nerve lesions. So, second degree and third degree nerve lesion is going to give a long term pain relief. So, how long? Again, it varies from person to person. At least one and a half year. And sometimes we have seen the pain relief is up to five years. So, it varies from the person to person as well as the different indications. Like if we are talking about the sacroiliac joint, if you are talking about the knee joint, so average pain relief durations might be one and a half to two years. But for the other conditions like the uh, facet joints, and some other indications, this duration of pain relief might be longer than the two years also. But still now, based on our experience of around four years, we can say that at least one and a half to two years pain relief is there. But in my opinion, most of the situation, it is even longer than two years. Cryoablation is another technique of doing the nerve ablations. So, cryoablation or it is also called the cryoneurolysis is another useful technique. So, here when you are using the radio frequency, there we are using the heat to ablate the nerve. In contrast, when you are using the cryoneurolysis, we are using extreme cold, approximately minus 80 degree to ablate the nerve. So, when we are ablating the nerve using the extreme cold at minus 80 degree, it causes second degree lesion. So second degree lesion, one of the advantage of second degree lesion is when the nerve gets regenerated, the regeneration is perfect. But at the same time, at the expense of the duration of pain relief. So the duration of pain relief in the cryoneurolysis is much shorter compared to that of the radio frequency. So both radio frequency as well as the cryoneurolysis has its own advantages and disadvantages. We have to individualize that what should be the best option for that particular patient. Cryoneurolysis can also produce a large size lesion, but as I told earlier that the duration of pain relief is shorter if you are compared with the radio frequency lesion.